Hello, and welcome to Hindsight 101, where you learn about things that will help you in everyday life. If you want to learn how to prepare for your own death, or maybe a loved one's death, stay tuned. Hello, I'm Derek. Welcome to Hindsight 101. And a couple years ago, my dad passed away, and I wasn't prepared for his death. I didn't know what it involved for someone to pass, the documentation, what I would need. Uh, he, was, he had cancer, and he was terminally ill, and it was just, I didn't have all the information. He lived in another state, and I was trying to piece different things together. The point of this video is, I want to make sure that you don't have to go through the same thing I went through. So I will give you some hints and tips and a lot of detail below um, in the description to help you, to guide you through what you need to do or what you may want to set up for someone else. First document you're gonna to wanna to get is a will. A will basically decides what happens when you die, who, what goes where, tend to whom, all your assets, and then how you'd like to be buried or cremated or whatever your beliefs are. It's, everything is outlined in your will. And with this will, there's, there's a couple options you can go. You can go see a lawyer, which I highly recommend, um, but if you have very little assets, very little family, or you're just gonna leave it to one person, then you could go online and, and, and download a will, or a hospital has wills. There's a lot of different places where you can get free wills, but they're very basic. But if you have a lot of investments, a lot of assets that you wanna, you wanna give out, different things like that, then you're definitely gonna wanna speak to a lawyer so they can best advise you. Plus things differ from, differ from state to state, so you wanna make sure you don't accidentally make your will null and void, and then, because at that point, you're gone and you can't help the person who's taking care of your, your affairs. The next thing you're gonna wanna get is a power of attorney. And what a power of attorney is, is basically a document stating that whoever you deem necessary, they're legally you. They can um, buy a house, take care of your bills, they can rent a car, they, they are you, and they can do whatever they want. So make sure you choose it wisely. There's several different types of power of attorneys. Um, there's a durable power of attorney that covers uh, specific things, and there's also a healthcare power of attorney that someone can um, act on your behalf in the hospital in case some decisions need to be made. No matter what, you want to make sure you have a power of attorney in case you become ill and incapacitated. Now, a power of attorney is only valid when you're alive, and once you pass away, it is null and void. So that's a good thing. Just make sure you're, you choose wisely on the person you give your power of attorney to. You can store them yourself and they know where to get them or you can give them to them. It's totally up to you, but just make sure you're smart about it. Now this next one is all encompassing. It's about, it's about password management. And the reason why I bring up password management is a lot of your documentations now are online and a lot of things that uh, a company or whoever may need they'll take copies. There's a few things like a birth certificate or a death certificate or a social security card or anything like that that you may need the original copies for, but there's a lot of other things that you can you could just download from the internet and be fine with. So you wanna make sure that um, someone has access to all your passwords. Sure, you could write them all down and keep them somewhere and that's easy as well. But uh, I use RoboForm, there's iPass, there's KeepPass, there's a whole bunch of different ones and I'll, I'll, sh I'll list them down below but they, they store your passwords in one central location. Uh, they are pretty secure, but nothing's 100% secure. But you can also, you can also set up um, a proxy where you can send them a password and they can get in if they need to. So that's always nice as well. There's also a lot of many other companies that do different things, such as Google. I, I have it set up that if, I, if I'm inactive for three months, then uh, it sends an email to my spouse saying, giving her access to my password and whatnot. Uh, so I know because I have my phone on me every day. If I'm not checking my email in three months, something is seriously wrong, and it's okay to send her that information. But also, I will. Uh, there's a whole laundry list of documents that you're going to need to know. That's why you need the passwords and access to a lot of different things. And I'll link all that below, um, a whole, whole, whole list of things that you're going to need. And you never want to go hunting for these things. So you, you always wanna know where it is, it's in one central location, and there's copies in case there's a fire or anything like that, but you wanna know where this stuff is because if someone's sick or dying, that's the last thing you wanna deal with is trying to find certain things. And in my case, when my father, I, I didn't live with my father, um, well, not even in the same state, it was a battle trying to find out all his information at the last minute. I'll also list a checklist down below 
uh, to kind of help you guide you through what you, what you should do step by step. Next, we're going to talk about beneficiaries. Basically, a beneficiary says that, say you have this, these investments um, that you want to leave to someone, this is the person you're going to leave it to. You can leave it to one person or you can leave it to several people. It's totally up to you. Um, and then you also can set it up that if this person passes away, who's your contingency? So there's a lot of different things, but you want to make sure that you have a beneficiary because you never want it tied up in the courts in probate because probate will take, take forever. And if someone needs access to those funds now, the last thing you want is to have them battle out in the courts. Or if you have multiple family members that feel they, they have a right to it and you didn't specify who should get it or how much, then someone could feel like, I deserve it all. I've had that happen in my family where we kind of had a little tiff because <laughs> my father didn't outline things very well. So you want to make sure everything is outlined well also in your will and as a beneficiary. There, there are different types of things that, that allow beneficiaries. A retirement, 401k, IRA, investments, and ins health, I mean, life insurance, many different things. So make sure you look into it and make sure you set it up. It only takes a little bit of information, name, address, social security number, uh, maybe a few other things, but it's pretty basic. And it'll just ensure that once again, everything is taken care of before something happens to you. Next, we're going to talk about TOD, transfer of death. And what happens is say you have a bank account set up with a TOD. And then if you pass away, then all those funds will go directly to this other person that you designate should have them. Um, it's good, especially if you have funeral expenses or you need to pay bills because you do have to pay your taxes, your bills, and different things like that when you pass. It's not null and void. There is a list that you have to go through as far as taxes come first, this comes second, different things like that. You have to pay before all the money runs out, but you are still financially responsible for things even after your death. So you want to make sure that someone has quick access to your funds um, so they can take care of this. So this is another little thing that helped me. And basically what it was, was setting up bill pay. You can set up bill pay through your credit cards, each individual one, or what I like to do is through my bank, where it's one central location and I just send it out. This helped me a lot when I was in the military and I really didn't have people to take care of my funds. Um, I also set it up for my mother, uh, just because she's kind of forgetful, but also whenever that time comes, I know what bills she has to pay. I just have to make sure the money's in there and I can just pay it. So I don't really have to hunt down um, any bill receipts or different things like that, trying to pay her bills. It's all in one place. And all I have to do is just make sure the money's in her account and let it get paid. And I am on her account. So I have access to her funds right away. So here's another thing that I found that I'm actually still testing out. So if you're curious, I'll let you know more, but it's called Everplan. And basically what Everplan is, it's a website that will store all your information, bank accounts, people of contact, wills, anything that you need for when you pass away or if you're sick or you're gonna pass away, someone may need. It just keeps everything in one place for a fee, of course, but it's good, a peace of mind knowing that everything that you need is here and not one piece of it there, one piece of it there, one piece of it there. It's all gonna be in one place for someone to find if they need it. So if you're, if you're interested and wanna know more, I'll let you know my experiences, I'll do a follow-up video. So the last thing I want to talk about is a trust. And a trust is basically um, you're outlining all your assets and kind of putting in this one container. So again, it's to keep it away from the courts, out of probate, and you know where this information, where your assets are going to go and to whom. Now, there are some, some rules, kind of guidelines that say if you need a trust or not. Um, I'll link all that information below. But it's totally up to you if you think you need one or not. Usually if, it, if you have very few assets, it's not a big deal, but if you have a lot of assets and you want it to go out to different people, you should really think about a trust. But again, talk to a lawyer. They'll be your best piece of advice and advise you um, the best way to handle things. And basically with the end of this, you just really want to have a conversation with someone about this inevitable thing that's going to happen to all of us because you'll find out a lot. My wife and I, we did it, and it was very interesting to know kind of how she felt about me passing and the things she wanted when she, she was going to pass. So it's really good to have these conversations now instead of the last minute when you have a lot of things swirling through your head. So thank you for watching. And as always, if you liked the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't, give me a thumbs down and let me know why. Thank you. Take care.